This was a video I probably should have done a lot earlier, but having been in the space for so long, I've underestimated the amount of friction that still exists when onboarding to Web3. Things like setting up a hot wallet, transferring crypto from exchanges to your own self-custody wallets, and signing transactions. So in this video, I'm going to help walk you through how to set up a crypto wallet and explain some of the basics of Web3 so that you have a better understanding of what it is you're actually doing. Look, maybe you're trying to counter inflation, diversify your portfolio, or just get into NFTs. Now is a great time to learn the basics and get started without the distractions of a bull market. Hey guys, I'm DeFi Bay and I started investing in crypto back in 2017, and since then I've noticed a lot of chaotic information overload, so I've condensed it and simplified it for you in this video. First, let's start with what is crypto. The easiest way to explain it is crypto or cryptocurrency is a digital currency that is secured by cryptography or algorithmic code, which makes it nearly impossible to counterfeit or double spin. The result of this code in action is called the blockchain or a shared immutable ledger that facilitates the process of recording transactions and tracking assets in a digital network. Each new transaction is built on top of all previously executed transactions forming a chain of blocks, therefore a blockchain. And a crypto wallet is not an actual wallet where things are actually stored inside of it in the way that we view wallets traditionally. Think of it as more of a key that allows access to parts of the blockchain, specifically your funds. Everything on the blockchain is public, shared, and irreversible. The term Web3 refers to a decentralized online ecosystem based on this blockchain. Different blockchains have different roles, and the most popular ones are Bitcoin, known for its role as a store of value, Ethereum, known as a smart contract blockchain, and different stable coins that are pegged to their respective fiat currency, and so on. Now, let's talk about how to get the crypto. Well, there's a few different ways to get crypto. The most popular fiat on ramps are centralized exchanges like Binance, Coinbase, Kraken, and even Robinhood now. This obviously differs by country of residence and requires KYC or know your customer. I personally like to compare all of the different fees for trading, withdrawals, and deposits before signing up. The second on ramp method is P2P transfers or person to person. This means either working in Web3 and getting paid in crypto or having somebody send you crypto directly. This can be done with friends, with family, or P2P exchange websites. For example, for Bitcoin, using local Bitcoin, Paxful, or HODL HODL. The pros of P2P is that they do not require KYC and they don't require you to give up custody of your funds. Because here's the thing, if you use Coinbase, or Binance or Robinhood, those wallets are technically not yours. This means not your keys, not your crypto. The third popular method are crypto faucets. These are websites that give you small amounts of different types of crypto to encourage you to start using their network. For example, you can go to a Bitcoin faucet and get very small amounts of Satoshi per day just to start an experiment and become integrated with the network. If you choose a centralized exchange like Binance or Coinbase, they actually hold the crypto for you. So in the event of insolvency, hacks, or any other issues, it means not your keys, not your crypto. We've seen this play out several times over the years with Mt. Gox, Celsius, and more. So the best way to avoid a centralized authority controlling your crypto is to opt for self-custody by downloading a Web3 wallet. There are two kinds of Web3 wallets. You have hot wallets and cold wallets. Hot wallets are essentially software applications or browser wallets that sit on the installed device and are constantly connected to the internet. This also means that they are more vulnerable to hacks and phishing scams, whereas cold wallets are actual hardware wallets which remain offline. The most popular hot wallets are MetaMask, Wallet Connect, Trust, and Coinbase Wallet. For popular blockchains like Ethereum, you can buy crypto directly from hot wallets like MetaMask, but they're not as popular and the rates and fees may not be the best. The popular cold wallets are Ledger, and Trezors. Since MetaMask is the most popular one and the most widely used and accepted wallet, I'm gonna walk you through how to set up a MetaMask. And then you can check a list in the description for all of the different cold wallets that you can choose from. All right, so first what you wanna do is go to your Chrome web store and look up MetaMask. 
You can also just go directly to metamask.io. I'm personally using Brave browser, but it's essentially Chrome, so either one is good. You can also use Firefox if you want. So click download and add to Brave, add extension. It says checking and now it has been added. Welcome to MetaMask, connecting you to Ethereum and the decentralized web. Get started. If you're new to MetaMask, you will want to do this. So let's go ahead and create a wallet. Um, I like to opt out of this, up to you. And this is where you will create a password. So and create. They also give you a short video to learn about your secret recovery phrase and how to keep your wallet safe. I'm going to skip through this. You can watch it on your own time, but just know that a secret recovery phrase is a 12 word phrase that is the master key to your funds. You want to save it in a password manager, in a bank vault, safe deposit box, write it down and store in multiple secret places. And most importantly, never, ever, ever share this secret recovery phrase. MetaMask won't even ask you for this. You click to reveal. So these would be the 12 words that make up your secret recovery phrase, also known as a seed phrase. This cannot be changed. It is with this particular wallet forever. You can also use this phrase to back up and restore your account. So let's click next comfort lunch. All right, congratulations, you passed the test. Keep your secret recovery phrase safe. And done. You now have your first MetaMask hot wallet. It's using ETH as your main currency because we are on Ethereum mainnet. This is going to be your public address. All you have to do now is copy this to clipboard and then paste it in the withdrawal address when you want to withdraw your crypto from a centralized exchange or anywhere, as long as it's on Ethereum mainnet. And if you click on account details, this is your QR code, and this is the full public address. View it on Etherscan. You can see this is your address right here. This is your balance, the Ether value, as well as transactions, token transactions, analytics, and comments. Etherscan is where you can view the Ethereum blockchain and all of the public transactions. And now here, you can see an option to lock out of your account. You can create another account, as many as you like. You can import accounts, and you can connect hardware wallet accounts. And here is settings. So if you want to create another one, you simply just create account two, so on and so forth. Each account will have its own different public address. This is where you change your networks. If you want to start using, for example, Polygon, Avalanche, Solana, you can add them to here as long as they're Ethereum compatible. Now, if you have tokens in here that aren't showing up, if you don't see your tokens, you can either refresh or import tokens. So for example, if I want USDC and it's not showing up, I click USDC, click next, import tokens, now I'm able to see the total USDC balance. These three dots, your menu options for this account. You can also check to see which sites this account is connected to. Just for safety precautions, I like to disconnect from all sites after I'm done using my hot wallet to minimize the exposure of being online. And that's it. Something important that I want to bring to your attention is the difference between a private key and a seed phrase or your secret recovery phrase. So remember, a private key is an access key to just one address or account, while the seed phrase is an access key to the whole wallet, which can hold multiple addresses. So in the beginning, the seed phrase that you saw with the 12 words that gives access, master access, to all of the accounts within this wallet. If you just want to import individual accounts, you'll need the private key. And to get the private key, what you do is you choose the account that you want to import, click Account Details, and Export Private Key. Anyone with your private keys can steal any assets held in your account. 
So this is going to be your login, password, confirm, and this is your private key. It is basically just one long string of letters and numbers, not a combination of 12 words. Wallets use recovery seed phrase as both access key and instruction to set up all addresses or accounts. Wallets always create the same set of addresses and private keys from a given seed phrase. And remember, it's virtually impossible to crack them by hackers, and so if your seed phrase backup is lost or destroyed, you won't be able to get your funds back. This is why it's so important to protect your seed phrase with a solid crypto backup. So now that you have your wallet, you're able to interact with any of the Ethereum enabled applications or dApps in your browser. You can also play with NFTs. I know OpenSea is the biggest and most popular one, but I highly suggest that you use gem.xyz instead. It's actually owned by OpenSea. They recently acquired them. It is an aggregator so it pulls listings from all sources by multiple entities at once so you click start now connect wallet choose metamask hit next connect and you are good to go you can also download metamask on mobile but some of the functionality is going to be limited compared to the desktop version but that's it for this video. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Smash that like button and I will see you in the next video.